And next, a whale of a bargain. Just sit back and relax and let me show you something that really no household should be without. Firstly, a perfect example of a lady assistant to James Well with the most fantastic blue outfit on and long locks of dark hair. And moving on, we have, of course, our Jerry Hayes. And a Jerry Hayes with a man with, yes, a small majority and a very, very large, <laughs> fluffy hair, beautiful sort of animal-like beard there and little piggy eyes and what a gorgeous example of a Jerry Hayes. Let's move on now to our next subject and our next subject, what, a full-bodied, yes, Gary Jacobs, a face of wisdom, a face of honour. Oh, isn't he wonderful? And then, of course, to the man himself, the man who really is the programme, Mr. James Whale. Just look how the light reflects off the top of his head there. What a fantastic man. In your own time, James. <laughs> Q titles. Deserved, I feel as well. Welcome at home. Welcome here late at night in the studio. Here we come from the middle of London. A little later, we'll be finding about this phenomenon that is sweeping the country called shopping, the shopping channel. And, and I, I'm hooked, and so will everybody else be by the time we finish tonight. But as you, what are we doing tonight, by the way? All oh, right. Well, we're going to go straight to yes. We usually do the competition, but we thought we'd change. Uh, so we're going to uh, do, we're going to have a little magic first of all, uh, an illusion. Move out of the way, Jerry. Move out of the way. Uh, so I think I'll go and sit. Over. Are you ready? Yes. Fine. Good. Okay. I'll go and sit over here. Please, ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome Mr. Mike Farrell? <laughs>
well, well, Mikey, that is excellent. Well, How are you? All right? I'm fine, thank you. Are you? Hang on, just put your arms up there. Let's have a quick fit. <laughs> just oh, it's all. <laughs> It's, it is, you feel, yeah, because we, could, we couldn't see how you did that and we walked round ah. like you asked us not to, but we did and, <laughs> and we couldn't see. Could you do that to Cookie? Yeah. Well, if we have time, we probably won't. We'll, we'll try it. the show. Yeah. Where is she? Over there. Yeah. No, no, not yet. No, yeah, we'll try anyway. <laughs> Mike Farrell, ladies Thank and gentlemen. You. Thanks very much for being on the star door so many people have written in since last week and want to come through the star door and maybe if you get in touch you can uh i know michael the competition all right okay uh but to start the competition of the program we have to do it this way we have to say ladies and gentlemen here's Yay! cookie Yay! <laughs> all right a little twirl a little twirl uh something else you Ooh. managed to squeeze yourself into yes. yeah into the microphone Box. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. Good. Now, what about the uh, winner from a couple of weeks ago, off on the island of Kos, is uh, Ernie Tully from Killer Marsh in Sheffield. Right. Yes, that's good. Okay. Uh, why don't Ernie. you stand up here? Why don't you stand up there? That's better because you know they don't. <coughs> right. Awesome. Well, I know. Have you had a good week, by the way? A fabulous week. Yeah. Yeah. Have you? I don't know, but you always see hosts on TV shows when the girl comes out. They always say, "Have you had a good week?" and they say something, some witty repartee, which we're obviously not going to get. Well, uh, you can't right. Rehearse, I'll do it. With... No, well, right. we can't. They don't apparently. You think Des O'Connor rehearses that? <laughs> of course he doesn't. <laughs> now, um, right, the competition, very important part of the show, which we're over here. Uh, you could win a seven-night holiday, seven nights for you and a friend uh, in the Canaries or the Mediterranean, because we're sending you somewhere really nice. I'm going to be great at this selling shopping stuff, aren't I? You are. Yeah, I think so. Really nice, marvellous place to go. All you have to do is answer this one simple question. When was the last judicial hanging in Great Britain? A simple question, very simple, and you'll find out why I'm asking this question later. When was the last judicial hanging... Does that mean there were unjudicial hangings? Well, you know, the, the last... What it really means is the last execution. But Simon, our researcher, was trying to be clever. So when was the last hanging, execution-wise, in Great Britain? Was it 19, 1694, sorry, 1964 or 1994? It's a difficult one, I know. Um, it's, 16, it's an A, 1694, B, 1964 or C, 1994. Call us on 0891... 48. Four nine five zero. Oh. Why on earth didn't you say forty eight forty nine fifty? Because that's how I choose to say it. Oh, right, okay, fine. I'm mowing on it. have cookie back and we'll do the uh, competition a little bit later on this is time for my first guest and she's just about can we get the fanfare queued up and ready she is just about to come through the door please would you welcome Kate Cray <laughs> come and sit here darling how are you okay, fine. nice to see you do have a seat there we are now, Kate is uh, the author of uh, this book called Lifers. Uh, Britain's eight deadliest criminals tell their own story in here, first of all. Before we talk about that, um, recent events in prisons make me want to ask why the craze never managed to break out. I mean, it seems that everybody in the cat's breaking out at the moment. Why should they want to break out? Oh. If they break out, where are they going to go? Everybody knows them. They're not going to walk about with a ginger moustache, are they? Why not? <laughs> Plastic surgery or something like that? It'd be no? too hot. Do You're not actually married anymore, are you? No. Divorced in July. OK. Well, Major, look, before we get into this, um, um, I know since you, you, you met the Greys, you married one of them, uh, you got to know other people in prison, you became fascinated by it, and the book goes through the stories of people who are serving life, what they yeah. feel about their crimes. Some may say that it's glorifying what they did. Well, it's not really because I tried to give both both views, the police and the court side of it first, and then I go into letting them say in their own words exactly what they done and why they did it. Mm. So it's not really glorifying it. It's saying exactly how it was. None of them say, except for one, Linda Calvin, but none of them say I'm innocent because I wouldn't have that. Linda actually seemed when I read this, she seemed 
like the woman next door. I mean, she seemed... I don't know why I, I would imagine... I wouldn't she, say that. Well, OK, but, but everything, the way she talks about what she did and everything else is yeah. so matter-of-fact. Well, now, Linda Calvey was... She's always been around gangsters. She knows the score. Her husband was shot by the police. Um, then she was done for armed robbery, so she hardly lives next door to you. Well, yes, but, then, but you never know, And then she you? was convicted of murder, mm. but... Uh, she didn't commit that murder. I mean, and it sounds as if I'm going to say none of them did it, but they all did it, except for Linda Calvey. You're sure she didn't do it? I know she didn't do it. But she's still inside. Word on the street is yeah. that she didn't do it. And hopefully, fingers crossed, because of the book, yeah. we might have got an, an injustice thing from it. Well, see, I mean, we, we hear a lot in prison. We hear, you know, that people, mm. more people than ever last year, committed suicide in prison. Uh, we hear that, that uh, prisons are overcrowded and things. I mean, what is prison actually like? Well, you asked the wrong person. I haven't really been in prison, but I'm You've always been in prison around. More and... often than a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and in lots of asylums yeah. and things. But it's just awful. I mean, lots would say. I mean, the, the lifers that I did, most of them said it would have been kinder to hang me. And one of them even said to me that it was like it's like a living hell. It's like you're on a life support machine. You're just hanging on by a thread. And it would be better to switch mm. the machine off. Your ex-old man feel that way or not? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, not at all, no. What made you want to marry him? He asked me. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> you know, Jerry Hayes or, or Gary or I might ask you, but you, you probably say no. I mean... Yeah, but I had a relationship with Ron first. It wasn't... It wasn't I, just, like, I was friends with Reggie and, you know, I didn't just want to marry a cry. I'm not in the business of just wanting a marry. You weren't a sort of... I mean, there are some things... I'm not a groupie, yeah. There are groupies to murderers, aren't there? There is. There is, mm. I must admit. But I'm not one. Now, but you didn't meet them until they were inside, did you? No, no, I didn't. Well, no, how, I could, I just mean, how could you have a relationship them? with somebody who's inside? With great difficulty. That's why we're divorced. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Everybody sitting at home wants me to ask you the question, and I will. Ask I mean, me whatever you like, darling. Well, Everyone am, always asks me loads of questions. You know, I mean, did you have sex with him? Even if I did, I'm a lady, I wouldn't say yes or no. Oh, you wouldn't? But no, okay. I didn't. <laughs> so you married this guy. You, you, yeah. never, you never consummated the marriage. Mm. Um... I mean, was it a publicity stunt so that you knew you'd write this book in the future? No, I've written three books, mm. but this one's not about the craze. There's nothing to do with the craze. When I married Ron... But I mean, your I was name is now, and that, that gives you but the that, sort of... I was married to Ron for five years, and that's a long time to have a publicity stunt. I could have went off and married somebody mm. else. It would, and it would have been a much easier life. Were you faithful to him for those five years? No. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't. I mean, I mean, most people are frightened Ron, of the craze, and to well, say that it. on television. Well, you know, when, he, when, when I married him, he just laughed, and and I, we discussed it, and yeah. I was going to have a boyfriend. Obviously, I was, and and he said, but you've got to find someone first because he, there's his friends that wouldn't touch me because out of respect, yeah. and then there's the normal people wouldn't or touch fear. me out of fear. Yeah. So he just used to laugh and say, you've got to find someone first. Did he vet them? No, of course he didn't. But Reggie has met my boyfriend, yeah. Fascinating. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Cray. <laughs> what did you say, Michael? Oh, yes, no. We're going to music now, are we? Oh, yes, I know it's Noah. OK. You, you, you really... It's, I don't know if it's the New Year, Mansfield, or not, but you really... Have you been taking some sort of... I don't know. No, you are helping me. You are helping me. I wasn't being... It, it might be late, and I know you're tetch, and I know you need your eight hours, but just calm down and we'll get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, singing... What was it, by the way? What, what were they singing? You, you're not going to tell me now? Oh, fine, OK. Yes, I know. OK, they're singing Jamboree. Right, ladies and gentlemen, first time on British television, and they are great. You listen to this. Here's Noah and Jamboree! <laughs>
Jamboree, be away from me. Jamboree, Jamboree. Jamboree, be wait, 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 come on. Shed, working on a fool's bed, no mistake, she was out for you. When she was single, you was in the window. Brass tag hanging around your neck. Said you were the God saying, have you met my boyfriend? He's taking me to Continentia. No more silly bus, ride a classical and red drive. Thank you very much. You'll do me nicely raining lately. She's complaining, baby, about the booze in the face of all. Call music. That's a good name for a show, isn't it? Now that's what I call music. That's ja Jamboree from No. They'll be back a little later on. That was brilliant. Where are we? I've forgotten. Uh, oh, I think it's a competition before we go to the break, isn't it? Okay. okay. I'm building the part for you, and you sit there and uh, give me the competition. Don't do that, for goodness sake. Okay. When was the last? Because we had Kate Cray on the show. Okay. When was the last hanging in Britain? When was the last execution in Britain? Was it in A, 1694, B, 1964, or C, 1994? We will be back. You have uh, until midnight on Sunday to ring 0891 48 49 50. We'll be back in a trith. Um, so don't go away. All that sort of stuff. <laughs> Are you positive? Do it again. No, do it again. You made such a business of it. Do it again. Go on. Go. Go. Go on. Whiz. No, no, that's it. That's it. Lovely. Hooray! That wasn't quite as good the second time round, was it? It wasn't, was it? It no. wasn't. Yeah. Okay, right. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, now, this is the address, of course, the James Whale Show. It's very nice, and uh, that's the uh, the address down there. That's my name. My name is... That's my name, and that's the address. The address is down there. My name, address. If you want to get in touch, you want to come on the programme, that's all you have to do. Now, ever since they took Crossroads off the television, I think there has been a dearth in quality TV. If I don't get home and watch Neighbours, it has to be recorded for me, and I love all sorts of television, and I am now hooked on this phenomenon called the shopping channel and for those of you without satellite or cable you may never have seen shopping TV but be warned once you get it it's addictive and this is what happens well welcome to the James Whale shopping channel and here we have a big variety of things to show you today starting off in fact and I think I need a James Whale to help me demonstrate this in fact 
So if, if Sir could come along this way. This is a fabulous massager that we show quite a lot on our famous shopping channel. I think it's actually very, very important that James Well is here to have this demonstrated. Are you ready? Yep. Which bit feels most like it needs massaging? I don't think there's anything we can do for that bit, actually. Oh, the shoulders. No, the head. Got... No, you could do it on the head, right. <laughs> All right, then. Okay. Right, well, we'll find a particular... Oh, never mind, go on. Right. <laughs> we'll find a particular applicator to put on the end here, which is absolutely perfect... Perfect. ...for your head. Mm. Although I don't think any amount of stimulation is going to get the hair back, James. I hope honest. not. Are we, how does that feel? <laughs> but then, even funnier thing, if you lift your head up, yeah. now speak. <laughs> you see, yeah, see, it doesn't really make yeah. any difference. It doesn't actually, because no, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't at all. Anyway, that's good. So that's um, that's. that's yeah. That, yeah, but there's more to it than that. Yeah. There's more to it than that. Believe sure, me, because this is yeah. an infrared massager. Is it? Oh yes. Yeah. And so this means that you get your your skin sort of penetrated with the heat to make it better for your shoulders to be massaged in the beginning. Are you taking notes? Yeah, no, I was going to write the price because you usually have it in the corner of the screen, don't you? That's I was right. going to write the price on here. Absolutely. And, and then people and the order and then, number and everything. And the, the number people could phone in. Yeah. They certainly okay. could. And then we have, of course, the infamous QVC ruler. Yes, I like those. Well, we measure absolutely everything, James. So be careful. So people at home could. So Ooh. people. Listen, it's 24 hours a day, they get bored at night. So, uh, there you are, so there we are, and you get a hole uh, 12 inches. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Don't you? Not so bad. It's really good value. 12 inches. It really is good value. You yeah. can't go wrong there. Okay. Uh, well, what about something even longer, James? Yes, of course. Where is Gary? I'm over here, James. Yes, OK, you know OK, OK. Now, uh, the thing I like about shopping TV, all right, is that you get glued into it. It's not so much what you're selling but it's about the presenters themselves. And, first of all, you've got beauty spots all over your hand, I noticed. Have you seen? Because when you, you dangle the jewellery there, and the... Mm. Oh, you've got different nail varnish on. Yes. Well, saw, yes. No, no French... Um, peel on, peel off mm. nail varnish, this one. Now, and I'm very worried about Tony Blackburn, who makes guest appearances on there, because uh, he bites his fingernails. And you can't... When he's, when he's, when he's got hands around cameras and things like that, and you can see, the, would you pass that? Would you tell him not to do that? I'll, I'll pass that message on for you, especially. But we also yeah. take a lot of care of it. Well, I know, but just because it, it's difficult. And the person I really like is Alison. <laughs> you know, they have beauty with Alison, and Alison's always got all, and everything's brilliant. I love that. She's great. She's yeah. very, very, very informative. She's brilliant. Because she's good for all of us as well, because we need to ask questions. All the presenters need to ask questions. Because I, I saw you bouncing. I saw you bouncing on that little thing the oh, other day. Oh, I had a good bounce the other day. It was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I did one of these little trampoline things, and we were having a bounce. Do people it. write to you and tell you you've got sort of hairy earlobes and things like that? Because can you, can you see <laughs> how so she's got lovely, sort of blonde, downy earlobes? Can we get in close here? Because when they show, right in, no, no, close. I mean, where's, where's one of my manicured nails here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very close in there. Can you see? That's lovely. But I think I think it's a phenomenon that if you, you know, it's just like a soap opera, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I think we're right. It's a cult viewing, definitely. Mm. We've got a lot of people who watch it. Cara, so. thank you very much indeed. Stay with us tonight. And yeah, maybe we can okay. sell something else a little later on. Be brilliant. Okay. Thanks so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Cara Tritton. Tritton. Cara Tritton. Cara Tritton. <laughs> You could sell stuff on there, you know? You yes, you could sell stuff on there. We'll ask Cara, and uh, she said her boss is around. I wanted to ask her about something else, because I was watching her do, do jewellery the other day, Cara, and you have one of those rings. Can we get a shot of Cara? You have one of those rings on your finger, and you were saying if you wear it one way round, you're available, <laughs> and you, if you wear it the other way round, you're not... You see, what do you pick up on? Do you remember that? Oh, yes, I remember that. Yes, yes, okay. yes. And you wore it the way that you were obviously available. Did you get many calls after that? I didn't get any. You're the first person. You're my first offer. Really? Yeah. See you after the show. Uh, right, ladies and gentlemen, time for Gary Jacobs' legal spot. You're perspiring, aren't you? Am I? Yes. I don't feel hot. Here, where, hang on. Where's my pussy? And, uh, oh, never mind. Oh, uh, right. right. Hello there, James. Shall we, shall we start, dear? Uh, yes, yes, you... indeed. We've had busy. One, one very interesting question here that I think could take days. But uh, Jerry may be able to deal with this as well. Uh, somebody says something very interesting about quarantine. If the government takes away quarantine control and my dog gets rabies or my pussy gets rabies, will I be able to sue the government for negligence because they know the threat to human life and to thousands of pets? And the answer well, is... the answer is probably not. And I have to say probably because the government would normally not be suable for a law passed in Parliament for the consequences of it, unless it could be shown that uh, through a, a procedure called judicial review that ministers were behaving in an irresponsible or oppressive mm. way. So I actually think the answer is not. But what I do say is, have a go. Possibly 
if it, uh, God forbid it happens, try for legal aid and have a go. They deserve to be sued. Is and legal aid... Last year we talked quite a lot about legal aid becoming more and more difficult for the ordinary man and woman to, uh, to, to get. Is it getting any easier or nope, not? It's not only not getting easier. The Lord Chancellor has made it abundantly clear that it's going to be even more difficult for the solicitors who practice legal aid to get paid. So you'll probably find there'll be less solicitors undertaking the work and it's going to be a very pretty uh, terrible shambles. So we could, we could get happening what has happened with the dentists? What's happening with the dentists and the hospitals, mm. there'll be periods when the okay. solicitors cannot afford to work, when, therefore they won't work. When we come to you, uh, Mr Hayes, a little later, all right, be prepared for that question. When we come to you later... I'm sorry, I don't... No, well, hard luck. Now you just have to work think, it out when I think it's to. one of the most sinister uh, <laughs> yeah. a, a, a things that are going on. Legal aid. Right. Right, somebody has made a very interesting point. He says that foxes are dogs. Well, <clears> uh, <throat> as a matter of law, that, that they are not, because he says if somebody sets dogs onto a fox, that would make it illegal. Well, unfortunately, there's no protection for the fox, mm. and it's not regarded as a dog, and none of the laws that protect dogs protect foxes. They should, uh, but they don't. And we, we, we live in hope that soon they will. Well, with the likes of Tony Banks mm. and their pressure yep. on uh, the government, something may happen. Somebody sent me something. I can't tell this person's name, but they've sent me an indictment, which is the um, statement of offences that anybody has to face if they go for trial in the Crown Court. And what is interesting about this is it says, Defence Solicitor's Copy, the Queen versus... It's got his first name and his second name, but his third name is completely illegible. And this was way back in 91. He's obviously been convicted, I assume, served his sentence, wants to know if he can do a late appeal. Well, sadly, he can't. No, I'm waste afraid. of time. Get on with no, it. Well, no, the <coughs> point is, Leave it that a long. excuse me, a lot of people find that legal documents have errors in them. Last week we had somebody who had a divorce document that was wrongly signed, he thought, by the sheriff in Scotland. It quite often magistrates' we'll off. courts. Right. Yeah, magistrates' court summonses quite often have mistakes on them. Some of them can be varied, but they can't be varied, for example, to put a new person as the defendant is if it there's true? a time limit on prosecution. Is it true that, that anybody can become a magistrate? Um, anybody who hasn't got uh, criminal convictions can apply. Don't look at me like that. Oh, no, 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 I wasn't, sorry. No, any, the cookie, I'm not a cookie. No, I, I know all about your lack of convictions. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Um, well, you, you are getting bored with being on television, aren't you, Gary? You, I mean, you are getting bored. No, but you can apply. If you want to be a magistrate in your locality, you can simply write to the Lord Chancellor's office and they will vet you through the mm. local community, see what you have done by way of good works. And before anybody laughs, I'm saying, what, what, what the hell, why should you have to do good works? I mean, if Cookie wanted to become a magistrate... Cookie is actually an ideal candidate exactly. for the magistrate. Why on earth you She's involved try. with yeah. society. She actually portrays herself in front of people. Mm. She'll have no problem standing in front of them, unless, of course, she tries to deal out a sentence like she read the uh, <laughs> winner of the competition. <laughs> She'd probably get it all wrong. But yeah. she, she would be, I mean, she's perfectly entitled. So if you think you would be a good magistrate, what do you do? Uh, you simply write a letter to the Lord Chancellor's Department. You say, I would like to be appointed as a magistrate. Can you please send me an application form? You'll then have to provide a couple of referees who will themselves be magistrates normally in the locality in which you're applying. OK, sorry to take your time up with that, no, but I thought it was interesting because right. no, we need no some problem. different sorts of magistrates, I think. Uh, yes, we idea. do. We need some different sorts of judges. That is a bigger problem. The Lord Chancellor recently said that he will not use social engineering to make sure that the judges are of ethnic minorities. My God, nearly every judge comes from Oxford or Cambridge. Okay, good point. That isn't very, very good point. What is Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Gary Jacobs! <laughs> Thank you. OK, now, the address is over there. While I just get ready to introduce Noah for their next number, uh, if you want to write to us, uh, you have a legal problem, uh, the James Wales Show, MMTV, 5 to 7 Carnaby Street, London, W1... Uh, can't see the next bit. W1 will be fine. Right, here they are, singing Try. Please welcome back, second time on the programme tonight. Terrific band. You're going to love them. You really are, folks. Here's Noah! <laughs> Based on only what I've seen in you I can honestly say you're a carrier type And I Just like every other man I can say that I'll be faithful to you And I won't say I'll never lie at all Cause I'm just like every other man Wish I could be just like your movie star Write poetry or maybe sing to you All I can do is just be my 
myself in Try a little harder from now on Taking it for granted has to stop I'm not saying I'm changing Just saying I'll try Every other man Oh, I wish I could be Just like your movie star Write poetry or maybe sing to you All I can do is just be myself And try a little harder from now on Taking you for granted has to stop Saying I'm changing Saying I'll Try a little harder from now on Taking it for granted it has to stop I'm saying I'm changing Just saying I'll try I think that's one of the, the most, most beautiful songs we've had on this show for a long, long time. Thank you very much indeed. And any chance that's going to come out on a record or not? Let's hope so. Yes, it's you. <laughs> I think Thanks it should. No, I'm saying, show. listen, I'm saying nothing this year because last year I kept on saying, oh, that's a terrific band and we had some brilliant bands on and record companies seem to be living in a world of their own. Noah, terrific. Excellent. Uh, right, competition time before we go to the break. You can clap. Clap Noah, please. <laughs> I think I look good enough to be on a shopping programme, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was just giving you time because I said competition now. Competition. Competition. Time to do the competition before we... We're going to have the competition now before we take the break. Uh, I, and I'm, I'm going on talking about the competition. It doesn't take... Oh, there you are, Cookie. Thank you. What have you got your pussy on your arm for? Anyway, never mind. Uh, right. Shall we do... Don't hog the shot, will you? Des O'Connor wouldn't like that. Now, when was the last judicial hanging in Great Britain? When was the last execution? Are you listening to me, Jerry? Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, was it in 1694, 1964, or 1994? Call us up until midnight on 0891 48 59. No, I'll do that again. 0891 48 49 50. And the lines are open till midnight on Sunday. Thank you very much, Jadee. We're back in a couple of moments for part three. <laughs> Peter, our painter, one of uh, our painters, and these orcas, marvellous. Peter, Peter, Peter the painter. Peter. Is it Dave? I thought you were Peter. Never mind. Well, we've got a lot of hair to split, dear. Uh, right, so up here, the uh, the lovely killer whales. You see those, and uh, you get on with it, David. 
Or was it Peter? Um, and very, very nice indeed. Very lovely indeed. And I'm not too sure what you've been doing today, but... Um... What is this? Um, television. television. Oh, television. Shopping. Oh, uh, shopping vision. Money, of yeah. course, yes, yes. Well, we'll give that to Cara. She could take that back. It's nice. Sort of, yes. Doesn't look like her, but it's nice. Right. Uh, the reason we have that on... The... Should we have a little ripple for our painters who work here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good. Because, of course, we can't afford proper scenery. I lie. Now, that is pathetic. Do you know that? That is about the most pathetic idea I have ever seen you do. <laughs> Last... And you've done some pretty... Have you delivered any more children lately or not? No, no, no. no? no. It's about time, isn't it? About time you had some more. How many have you got now? Six? Uh, four. Four? Oh, it's about time you had a couple more, isn't it? Now, you may... <laughs> You may remember some, some time last year we adopted a family of killer whales, and why, why not? Because I think you should. Kim Wood is here uh, with us. Kim, Kim from the uh, Born Free Foundation. Thank you very much indeed, Kim. Stand up and show us your T-shirt. We don't usually uh, do this advertising, oh, but... Uh, oh, I'm caught. Cool. Uh, it does sound too much. Just that's fine. Pull it down. That's it. There we are. You shouldn't be so lumpy, you see. <laughs> right. 25 years. Get the whale out of jail. I don't want any, any ideas. Uh, free Corky now. Uh, in 90... No, he's been there for 9,125 days. Corky is... This is Corky? That's right. That's Corky in San Diego SeaWorld <clears> in <throat> California. Now, I have, I have to tell you that I have changed my mind over the last uh, year or so about this. I, I was lucky enough, and I, I was lucky, to, to swim with the last whale kept at Windsor. Winnie, Winnie yeah. the whale. And, uh, in fact, I have a film of it. I, unfortunately, we couldn't use it on the show tonight, but I'm hoping we might be able to. Yeah. Uh, and I spent hours in the pool with her. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, you know if you know about animals, you, 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 have a kind of, you, can, you sense a kind of relationship with an animal. And it was like being with a pet dog. Mm. And so there was there was a sort of a bonding and yeah. it, was, it was relaxed and it was happy and I thought well, it was okay and the, and the people who look after them do care they spend all their lives looking after them but when you think of an animal like this mm. like this being in something not much bigger than a swimming pool yeah well it is a swimming pool for years right. and years and years mm. it must be pretty horrendous well Corky is it's interesting that we're talking about your adopted family as mm. well because Corky actually comes from the same community that your family comes from. Where are my family right. now? Right, your family, the bees. The bees? Yep. The bees. They're in the waters off Vancouver Island, that's Canada. Uh -huh. So that's sort of... Yeah. Uh, OK. Well, we'll, we'll go to the map. You keep talking and... Um, so they... I want to see the picture. OK. Well, there, there's, <laughs> that's what it looks like out there probably. Yep, Not that's... now, it's dark. Not that but <laughs> it's dark. Uh, <laughs> it'll look like that. Yeah. OK. Right. So that, that's where their home is, and they go back there every year. Um, and Corky used to be, and I say used to be, because mm. now she lives in a swimming pool, she used to be in, live in those waters, in the same waters that your family live yeah. in. And so it's up here, really, isn't it? It's up. It's, um, to the it's bottom... To the, to the down here, yeah. Bottom... bottom. It's in this hemisphere. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's up there anyway. Fine. OK, go on. Yeah. Good geography. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so Cor Corky is from the same community that your family is. So Winnie was mm. came from Iceland. I know. With, yeah. So anyway, Corky's been in San Diego for 25... Not in San Diego, but in captivity for 25 years now. Because I think Winnie's been in there for 18 or 19 oh, years. Something like mm. that, yeah. Mm. And Winnie's now in the other sea world in Florida. And so the interesting thing is that, you know, Corky is an individual. We know Corky's history. Mm. Corky's family are still in the wild. So her mum, and I've actually seen her mum in the wild and seen her family swimming in the wild. You know, Corky was ripped from them when she was just four years old. And so your family, there's, there's quite a few members like Hooker, the mm. main guy in your family. Good, I'm he, glad we got na whales with names like yeah, Hooker. Hooker. And that's, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a right, he's very, a, he's a right on whale, actually. That is right actually, on, yeah. isn't it? That really is yeah. good. Politically, right on, good, yeah. good. So he would have been, like, he would have known Corky. So Corky's not anonymous. You know, so mm. anyway, we've we've launched a campaign. So our campaign is really hotting up now about Corky to make people aware of what life is like for a whale in captivity. Um, the main thing we sort of, if you ask anyone who's been to SeaWorld, they say, "Oh yeah, I saw Shamu the whale," mm. and they all say that. But what they don't realise is that Shamu is the registered trademark. So Shamu covers every single whale. So whether you go to Florida, mm. Texas, it's the same whale. And they do that because they die it would be It would be quite easy, although they live, for, as you were saying, for 25 years and longer, it would be quite easy for us, and you can now take uh, excursions, you can go and see whales in the wild. Yep, right. And yep. they, they come out of the water, they're quite tame. There is everything that you can see, perhaps is not, not as convenient. That's a good word, James, convenient, yeah. Because you can see them in the wild, you see what they're actually like, 
but in SeaWorld, what you see is just a big black and white mm. blob. It's not an orca. She doesn't do any of the things that she does in wild. She hasn't got her family around her. You know, like the adopt we know the adoptive families are really sort of tight knit communities. And with this Shamu thing, mm. that, you know, this sort of registered trademark. What can people do to help Corky? I'm, I'm sorry to rush you on. I'd like mm. to talk about this all night, but we only have a limited amount of time. Yeah. Well, the th main thing to do, one of the things they can do to help is act strange as it were, is to adopt a family. Because if you find out what orca are like in the wild, then you can't possibly see them in one of those little mm. tanks in, in San Diego. So when we adopt a family, can we be sure that the information we're getting about yeah. it is true? I mean, because oh, yeah. to a lot of us, they yeah. all look the same, and I'm sure we all look the same they to do. them. But... Yeah, yeah. Well, each whale is, is an individual, mm. and they all have, they're all have they all part of a photographic identity study, so they've all got their own individual fins, their own individual markings, so we know who's who. Will you come back and talk to me in a, a few months about it and I'd love uh, tell to. me what, what's happening as yeah. well? Uh, are we getting better? Are we stopping the uh, Spanish and the Japanese and people from hunting them or not? Are it's, we managing to? It's a battle. It is a battle. It isn't one yet. It isn't one yet. Actually, right now they're meeting, um, the IWC scientific mm. committees are meeting mm. to sort of work out. You know what's going to happen next. I'm just writing myself a note because when I talk to Jerry a little later, have I spoken to you? I haven't, have I? There's so many things I want to talk to you, and we'll have no time at the end, of course. Drift nets is a thing that, that, that Jerry, as a member of parliament, could be trying to do more about. And we still have drift nets in the sea, which will be the great do. walls yeah. of death. <gasps> Uh, they are despicable. I mean, we're running out of stocks of fish to eat. Drastically, and, right, yeah. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, Kim Wood. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Now, listen, she's given me that. I want that. I'm going to wear that all over the place, all right, when I'm watching the shopping channel, mostly. But uh, if you'd like to find out about how to adopt a family of killer whales, write to us here at the James Whale Show, and we'll send you back the information or get uh, the Born Free Foundation to do that. Now, a little light entertainment provided tonight by, I don't know, Simon, where you find these people, but he's, uh, you know, we had uh, the amazing Louise contorting herself last week, and now we have Kate Short. And this is a little song that Kate has done for us, a little musical interlude at the piano with Miss Kate Short, and this is called At The Party! <laughs> You're really fat. There's a pretty face there, hope it's available. Quick, get the lipstick, got to look sellable. What shall I say now? Oh, darling, you and I were made forever. He's a little on the shy side, my hips feel very wide. I gotta play cool now, gotta play the balls now, gotta look as though I never drew. However, I'm feeling, and I'm feeling that I want to take you home with me. Though I probably can't, you see. He's celibate or married or on the rebound or all three. A friend Fiona, they're back from there, yeah, off in India. They're more broad-minded now. They're gonna teach us how to meditate for one hour soon. Hey, it's really great, you know. I've really found my head. Yeah, you know, I really understand the cosmos. Now here comes a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. Arsenal! Party poppers came whizzing over there and we didn't see any of them. Kate Short, thank you very much. That was great. You were very worried about that, weren't you? Um, 
You were. <laughs> and you shouldn't have been. That was terrific. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Shaw. Let's have another little whistle for her. Good. Okay. Okay, TV fans. You're going to stand there behind him and I'm give him. Right will, you, right will you stay there She's and don't worry about it? In. TV I'm fans, I'm going to put my little orca over here. I'm going to put my little orca over here. I'm going to put it over there. there. Cut. That's it. I'm going to put it over there. And uh, it's going to it's going to be underneath my globe. All right. I don't know. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? I quite like it there. <laughs> now, Hayes, lovely to see you back at work. You might get off my pussy. Um, it's cooking. And I suppose that uh, what have you been doing? Well, it's decorating the house of no, Commons, no, I suppose. No, Hanging no, out no, around the house no, of Commons. I went skiing, skiing with my kids. And Did you? My little boy that got is not... frostbite of his ear. Oh dear. Poor well, there we are. Yes, are we are. worried? But of course, Jerry is a family man, <laughs> full of family values, <laughs> uh, right, which so is why I mentioned that. Now, listen. Could we get back to? Uh, the drift net thing, because there's something yeah. we wanted to talk about. Yeah. This drift net. Now, uh, can, it could can we be actually, stopped. Yeah, we've actually dealt with drift nets before. There's Not well enough. That, something we ought to talk about, and that is veal that was mentioned. No, early, I'll tell you on. what we talk about. It's well, my I, show. Right, we talk about show. veal <laughs> when, when well, we talk maybe I, next I week. I happen to agree with you on, 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 on drift nets. So I know you do. We've got to do something about it. Well, do, you, well, you don't say you've got to do something about it. We have to do it. We have to do it. We have to do it. No, do the whips. We have to do it throughout Europe. The fact of the matter is we've got to make sure we make the laws that are in accordance with the European laws, and that is the trouble with veal. I would like... Oh, everyone, God, forget I would like veal to ban, for a No, no, right. I would like to ban no. the export of, of all live animals. animals. But As most people watch this program like to We talked about do, that last week. But we week. are not allowed to do it at the moment. We have to bring Europe with us. Okay. That is in the that, difficulty. In that case, let's ask a serious question. Yeah. Were we wrong to join Europe? I mean, no. the peoples of no. this world seem to find no. it almost impossible, no. whether you look at Chechnya no. or whether you look at Yugoslavia, they seem to find it almost impossible to live together. 60%, 60% of our exports, things we sell, go to Europe. We can't get out. There's nowhere else to sell. We what don't, we have to do is make we, sure look, it's look, not a political institution. Listen, I'm, I, I know you don't really mean this, but it seems to me every time I, I, I talk to, to certain political yeah, people yeah. that they seem to feel the only reason to be born and brought into the world is to be in business no, and to run no, business no, and to be in a no, profit situation. No, there's only one there reason. There are other things yeah, in life. People want to have fun. And the only way you can have fun I'm afraid, is if you've got a little bit of money, and the only way you're going to get a little bit of yeah, money, unless you win a lottery. There's a few people who've got a little no, bit no, of no, money. No, 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 no. There's a few people who've got a lot of money, but quite well, a few people have got a little bit of money. Are we going to get the Tories so redistributing people... some of the great wealth in this well, country? Is that what I, we're going to do? That's what we've been doing for, for, for years. It's only recently we had to, to actually increase taxes because the economy was in such a mess. But things are looking Europe's so much Europe's not better. working, though, is it? Europe, Europe is not is working, and a lot working. of people in this country Europe are beginning to think that we actually are getting the raw end of the deal. Then who do we sell to? 60% of our exports. The Commonwealth has disappeared. We can't sell to the Commonwealth. Can I ask you a question? This is a very naive question. And, and Gary, you, you qu quickly, because we're running out of time. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we, we in this country could be self-sufficient, more no. or less. No. We could if no. we tried to. No. Not we possible. could. Not possible. Of well, course it's possible. We were for many years before Europe. Of course we, we were. No, we weren't. We were relying on the empire. Well, I, I must tell you, I, I was much better off before we got into Europe, in my opinion. What, in 1971? Well, we didn't well, have a government. I don't think you could... I could that, that, Listen, that Gary's a load of old nonsense. Lives. If it's you thought, if you thought you'd thought get back in at the next election, if you would have become an Gary, anti let's Gary, let's an ask Gary a question here, because he came out with something absolutely ludicrous. Gary has said, I think Europe has destroyed people's lives. I think I was much better off in 1971. Why did you help him get out of that, Gary? For goodness sake, we had him then on the run. Where do you tell to, Gary? This is just like that program on satellite where where the, the MPs are arguing with each other. I love it. Where, where do we sell to? Little job. Once, once, you, once you stop people from exporting veal, what are the farmers going to do? They're not going to have any veal at all. I'm not playing with you anymore. I'm sorry. I'm not playing anymore. That's it. We'll be back next week. Thank you very much indeed. Have a lovely weekend, whatever you're doing, what's left of it. And join me again late Friday night next week. OK, you can carry on arguing. No, you don't want to. Come on, let's go. No, 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 no. I've had, I've had enough. That's it. I've had Cookie and I are going out. You're not invited. You're not invited. You're not. No, no, no. no.